I've been looking forward to seeing that with you folks for a while. And would you believe just because I'm excited about being here, my glasses weren't doing what they were supposed to do, so I wasn't doing exactly what I was supposed to do. But you and I have come together to worship the Lord our God, to know His strength and to be a part of the power and grace, mercy, and hope that our Lord Jesus has for us. Well, that was exactly right. They listened, but they didn't pay attention. Or they heard, but they didn't hear. And that's exactly what we have in front of us this day as every day. You and I have the opportunity to listen to the Lord our God and what He wants us to do. And will we do what He wants us to do? That's the question. You and I need to continue to do as God wants us to do. Carry His will, His word, and His way. In order that we might be the light shining out of darkness for those who need to see the light. The light of Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world, who continues to guard, guide, and direct our days and our deeds. But you know, that first lesson is a little bit disappointing in some ways. In other ways, it is very lifting and strengthening. For you see, the Lord passed by seven sons before we came to the one that he wanted to have as king. And I sometimes wonder if he doesn't do us the same way. He passes us by because we are not the ones he wants to proclaim the will and the word. And then I think about it. He has a particular purpose for you and for me. To carry forth his will and his word in the way that we are about. So you and I do not feel, should not feel neglected. We should be important people because God has chosen us to carry the message of salvation to those who are about us. We are like David. We can be inspired by the power and strength of the Lord our God. If you haven't read this whole story of life recently, I would encourage you to go back and read that story again after David was anointed as king. And see what happens in his life and the life of Saul, who was a mentor of his. We are guided and guarded by the power and strength of God. And we are those who are called to acknowledge who we are and what we are about as we carry forth the will and word of the Lord. In our gospel lesson for today, we are reminded again and again of the fact that you and I don't pay attention. We don't listen. We do not listen as we should to the calling of the Lord our God. For you see, we want to see it as we see it. We want to see the good, the gracious, the, the beautiful. We don't want to see the ugly that's there. And yet if you and I live in reality, which we do, we have to deal with the ugly that comes our way on occasion. We have to know that the strength and power of God is going to see us through it. That that power, that grace, that mercy, and that hope will continue to lift us up in what we are about. So that we can walk in the light of Christ. We can be a part of that light that shines into the darkness of the world. That has no light. Because they have not heard of the power of the Lord God, Jesus Christ. Jesus who brings to us that forgiveness of sins from sin and that strength to be a part of that eternal glory that he has planned for you and for me. So this morning as we have gathered together and as we have listened to the lesson, let's go back to that second lesson, if you will, for a moment. That we are called to be the shining light of the gospel. We are called through the writings of St. Paul, we'll say, to be strengthened in God's love and mercy by what we say and what we do. So that we can sing as the hymns that we have sung and will continue to sing today, guiding, guarding, and directing our days and deeds that they may accomplish the purposes of the Lord our God. Maybe you're asking, what is that purpose? That purpose is for you and me to share the good news of the Savior of the world, Jesus the Christ. That you and I stand firm in the forgiveness of sins as we have received it from God and pass it on to others that they too may see and know the strength and power of the Lord our God. We men are called, called to be a part of a continuing relationship 
that will let us be stronger in hope, in faith, and in love. So that in that love that we have for the Lord our God, we can have love for our fellow brothers and sisters. We can know that the strength and power is there. And yet, at the same time, we are not just to be run over or pressed down. We are to be those who are to stand up for the, the right things in life. The good things in life, if you will, please. The good things being that we are followers of the commandment to the Lord our God. We are those who have heard and are aware of the fact that our Lord died and rose from the dead in order that we might have life and have it abundantly. We are those who are called to be a part of that continuing good news of the saving power of God. And yet I wonder, how bright is your shining light? It needs to be kindled again. In the olden days, when they had a lamp, they could turn up the, the uh, wick and make it stronger. Today's time, we need to turn up our faith in the Lord our God. Let that be the wick. The wick that gives us the strength that we need to continue to carry forth the will and work of God. You and I are those people who are empowered, empowered by the Lord God to share His grace, His mercy, His hope, His love for the future. And yet we are also those people who have to deal with the aggravating times of sorrow, of darkness, of lack of hope, of being at the rope's end, if you will. And yet we need to know that at the end of that rope, is the power and strength of God who will lift us again into that eternal glory that he has for you and for me. So we can sing in a few minutes the hymn that is next in our bulletin for today. I want to walk as a child of the light. We want to walk with Jesus. We want to be sure that we are following Jesus in what we say and what we do. That we may be lifting, strengthening, and powerful to those who need to see the power of the Lord our God. Did you know that? You are powerful. Powerful by what you say and what you do. The way you respond to those who are about you. You can lift up that strength of the Lord our God in how you act and react to those things that are going on around us in this day and in this time. And so we turn again and again to the strengthening power of the Lord our God. We listen and follow. We don't just listen and forget. We listen and follow the way of our Lord Jesus Christ, who forgave, who gave sins, the opportunity to be a part of that eternal glory. And let's not lose sight of the fact that the beginning of our gospel today States the fact that it is not whether we sin or not that we become blind. It is because we are the followers of God who have our eyes enlightened that we might see clearly the good news of the power of the Lord our God. So that yes, we are somewhat blind. Blind because we don't always listen. Blind because we don't always walk in the pathway of God. And yet we are called, called in the midst of all of that to be a part of that eternal glory that he has planned for you and for me. I challenge us, you and me, to walk more securely in the power of the Lord our God and to know that his gifts of love and mercy and strength are ours today as always. So in our gospel lesson for today, even though we might find ourselves becoming the blind or wanting further answers as those people did in the gospel of the other day, we need to rely most securely on the power of the Lord our God to give us that answer that helps us to know, to love, and to serve Him in what we are about. So let us be aware, aware that God's presence and love and mercy goes with us every step of the way. Look at our next hymn, if you will, or turn to our next hymn that, that we're going to sing in just a few minutes. I think that is one that should be our goal every day that we live, that we want to walk with Jesus in all that we say and do. 
May we be our strength, our power, and our hope. Let's sing it together.